There are few games out there that inspire more creativity than SimCity. I fondly remember my 11-year-old self struggling to balance a budget and grow a city on the Super Nintendo, failing but always coming back twice as diligent the next time. The franchise ignited a love for architecture, design, and planning in me as a youngster. And still to this day, legendary game designer Will Wright's bizarre and wonderful universe, dark and hilarious in its world design, are one of my fondest gaming memories. I was wondering if I'd gotten any better many years later, so I decided to undertake the creation of a megalopolis. The goal of the original SimCity in a hundred years of urban development. The world begins at year zero with natural disasters. There were so many absurd and ridiculous ways to torture the denizens of your city that somehow brought me great joy as a child, and I used it liberally to get the creative juices flowing. For the beginning of our city is where I have the most anxiety. It's where I would always fail as a kid, and you can make the most mistakes, those which will reverberate out into the rest of your city's history. Rytopia. No city can exist without power, and so before we begin zoning this monstrosity of a civilization, we need a cheap way of getting started. It's coal power for now, but we'll move on to that bougie wind power later on, where to put the coal power plant that poisons our air and water, leeching away the life of our children. Of course, on the very edge, the city limits of Wrightville right near the people of Audianapolis, just outside of Indianapolis. I dislike both cities and their people. Wrightville is born. We zone more factories to send our pollution their way. Some farms, a commercial district with a bunch of scammy car dealerships. That's all we can really afford right now. And then our housing. Ah, the fresh new feeling of a zoned city, ready to move in. And wowzers, we spent a lot of money on all this zoning. The year is 0 AD, population 0. We've just completed our zoning and it takes everyone, not gonna lie, about 4 months to move in. Yeesh. The first developments are humble. Little factories, impoverished hovels, an orange grove. We have no education at all, everyone is a dingus. But despite our dingusness, we get started anyway. Because nothing ever gets started just by talking. Year zero and we hit the ground running. Housing developments. Some among you would be inclined to call it a rural backwater. I shudder to say. You wouldn't see the roaring demand waiting to be fulfilled by our developers. As if overnight, suburbia sprang up. More housing. Agriculture. The first year ended. Our 60,000 simoleon investment was finally putting those taxpayer dollars back into our pocket. Droves of new families relocated to our town. Most of them were, to be fair, uneducated, willfully stupid ignoramuses. But they were Rytopians, and Rytopian means growth. And if you don't take my word for it, just look at our cows literally materializing out of nothing in order to join our town. Unfortunately, Rytopians were not the smartest. Intensely dense people. The whole town was rampant with dumb. So we constructed an elementary school and a high school to try to beat the stupid out of them. Scholars walked in the parking lots. Raytopia was finally growing, but only under the watchful vigilance of a frugal mayor, willing to slash school budgets to ensure the continued financial appreciation of the town. Crime was scarce, but apparently being committed randomly in beet fields. And of a sudden, the town's residents grew smarter, attracting wealthier neighbors and necessitating the urban transformation of farmlands into factories. The waltz of progress is lopsided, and we continually switch back and forth from residential project to industrial project, ever reaching higher with continued investments in the brains of our people. Those first ten years of our city's existence we were finally shaking off the plight of stupid from our people and paving the way for a new upwardly mobile path toward metropolis. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the neatest urban planner, but what I lacked in polish, I made up for in chutzpah. The truth is that the more you can do to attract those juicy taxpayer dollars, the more you're willing to cram them in there, even if that means bringing them in with four copies of the same pizzeria on one block. But for now, the car dealerships were the scammiest. The lawyers, the shadiest, and the entire government structure horribly corrupt. Do you have what it takes to grow a literal mountainside to a sprawling development of tens of thousands? It takes a shrewd businessman to trick this many people into doing something. And so the pigeons flooded to our town, poor drivers and all. 
shining citadel of hope. Cram them in there. That was our city motto. We had hospitals, or as I like to call them, hootspitals. Hootspacopters. Our city was truly turning into something awesome. Water treatment plant. Air pollution. Water pollution. Particulate poisoning. Rampant crime. Cram them in there. That was the name of the ball game for those first 30 years or so. Even if my advisors scorned me, because I'm such a great, selfless person, I decided to go to any lengths, even if that meant leveling entire city blocks to do what was necessary for the greater good of the town. We established a water system and went hard on dirty, bad industry. If your industry was too dirty for our city, too bad. We would simply demo the entire building after it was built, workers inside, to send a message to any more dirty, bad industry money men of the world that they were not welcome here in our town. We even raised taxes on them to keep them out, and it seemed they kept coming back. But after we surrounded the coal power plant with parks, it seemed we were starting to attract the types of manufacturing and high-tech industries that would actually help our population and make real progress. When traffic was rampant, and my advisors were livid, I leveled 40 city blocks without any prior notice or warning. But I wasn't about to let red tape or regulation get in the way of improving the city. Alternate solutions were sought. An entire city block of unemployed people simply threatened them with eviction, and to repave their homes with more car dealerships if they don't get work within a couple of hours. That was our other city motto. Work or else. Naturally, there eventually came growing pains. Around mid-century, we had used up all the available space on our one plot of land. Where to go next? Of course, the obvious solution was staring at us in the face. Drink the ocean! We embarked at once about the exorbitantly expensive process of replacing all of the water with land. Ultimately, my best decision as mayor, and the one for which I'll doubtlessly be remembered for a long time to come, Earth is flat. Don't question it. I'm not saying that the entire original city was just a ploy to collect taxpayer dollars in order to pave the way for the actual city once I realized that I had made many grave errors. But let's be honest, if you were playing, this is the point at which any normal person would have simply started a new town. Rytopia was somehow different. I doubled down, moving my mayor's house smack dab in the middle of my new developments. A grid of avenues for the new oceanless town where I would oversee the developments. Celebration was had with fireworks. I erected a statue of myself across the street from my home. <laughs> erected. erected. Admirers gathered at the new country club. The new grid-based town model was far superior in design to the old. And so it grew that there was a tale of two Rytopias. One of the lowlands, and the other of highlands, which one would ultimately reign supreme. And so as evidence of the low town's superior design became increasingly evident, I began leveling the rest of the town, block by block, to force the old citizens to conform to the mold of the new town. Join or die, literally, or we will bulldoze over your home and bury you in a mound of dirt hundreds of feet below for the foundation of the new city. This was a very persuasive argument. The citizens of Indianapolis nearby were already ahead of us with this model of urban design, and we would not be outdone. My advisors, all of them, scorned me with the lowest of contempt. They said it couldn't be done. Raise taxes. We would level this mountain and build a megalopolis, or literally die on this hill trying. I would not be trifled with, even if Fire Chief Sam Armstrong kept slightly dabbing on me intimidatingly. And so we continued about the process of suggesting that our citizens relocate, because we suspected their properties might be located above a sinkhole. Doo-doo was flung, taxes were raised, neighborhoods were gentrified, then rezoned as a subtle flex on their inhabitants to squeeze them into selling their homes before we changed the character of the neighborhood. Taxes were raised even more, even more doo-doo was flung, and these funds were used to bulldoze the very neighborhoods from which they were collected. But unfortunately, the timer had run up on our little experiment. I couldn't believe it. By the year 99, we had reached a population of 120,000. Unfortunately, not impressive at all because a megalopolis is 500,000 sims. Um, haha. <laughs>
SimCity is still exactly the way I remember it, after nearly 20 years. And it's probably one of the quirkiest franchises, whose original games really inspire a lot of what I enjoy about gaming to this day. It was nice to go back and experience it all again. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back for my Megalopolis one day soon. But for right now, Rytopia is calling me. A major thanks to my patrons who dab on me every day. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until we meet again next time, my friends.